Okay, I want to welcome everybody back uh, after Joseph's really outstanding presentation. Um, talked about some interesting technologies. Now, the next talk is going to be about some really interesting technologies. Two years ago, I don't think anybody imagined that we would be using satellite and aerial photography to locate underground infrastructure. But a company called 4M Analytics uh, has basically developed um, and pioneered this, this technology. And we're going to hear we're going to hear from Harel Dan, who is responsible for GIS and responsible for a lot of the machine learning algorithm, machine learning algorithms, and other technologies that have been used to make this possible. And also from Ophir Viner, who's had a lot of experience in North America in in the in the in the un, un, underground sector. So I'd like to ask uh, both uh, Harel and uh, maybe Harel is going to start off. Um, to uh, to take the floor. Hi, thank, thank you, Jeff. You. Actually, Ophir will start. Yeah, I'm just going to share my screen. There we go. And the truth is, I'm probably going to uh, right now just remove my camera so that just in case my bandwidth doesn't uh, doesn't actually get through. But uh, I'm just going to, you know, in case my bandwidth does not keep up, I'm going to just shut down my camera during my session. And when Harrell is presenting, I will put it back on. So thank you very much, everyone. I do appreciate uh, the time and uh, the ability to come out here and talk to everyone. It is a fantastic forum. And I do, Jeff, I really do appreciate what you've done for the industry and in putting this to really helping put this together. I know that we discussed the entire uh, set of sessions a few months ago, and uh, I'm really glad to see how it's come about and especially in the virtual format. So really amazing, great to see. A really fantastic presentation before, which I truly enjoyed. And just, uh, I'm gonna get into a little bit of uh, 4M, the next generation of subsurface mapping, and just talk about what we see as that next evolution of utility mapping and really some different things which we've taken to get to that point. Now, just so you know, 4M, I, I consider this a think tank where we're balancing a lot of different ideas and trying to use existing technologies and also different applications for different technologies and putting them together. And really this is a, a great mixing pot of information, technology and practical application. So as we know, mapping the underneath is just an absolute, uh, you know, it's an absolute wonder of how much is out there and what we want to do and where they want to take things and put it together. There is so much infrastructure, as we all know, the infrastructure that we see above ground and the infrastructure that we see below ground are two separate things. Above ground, it's very simple to map. It's very simple to understand where it is. It's very simple because it's a visual median. If we take a look and try and really understand what's underground, it becomes a whole new median. It becomes a whole new uh, a whole new realm of what should happen, what should really be. And we have a unique solution of solving a universal problem. We've put a fusion of artificial intelligence, satellite imagery, computer vision, generating an engine that creates mapping simulations of the subsurface. So really taking all these different aspects and putting them together and really trying to get to that point where what looks topside and we can also imitate bottom side with confidence and really understanding where we are and how we're going forward. So of course it is a typical uh, typical item. The problem is the inability to locate accurately buried utilities is a serious cause for budget overruns claims and delays at any infrastructure utility construction project. And everyone has been saying this before and everyone is really, you know, we're all harping on this, but there, these are standard items which have been uh, really pushed forward and if what have brought this industry together to go forward as well of you know construction delays utility relocations budget overruns uh, direct and indirect uh, costs and everyone here mentioned it before those direct and indirect costs of uh, you know budget you know, of uh, of damages uh, you know claims change orders and of course safety so we're you know we're looking at that same uh, and a common item right through and through, which everyone has been talking about. Jeff, you also brought it, 
brought it up a lot. We also brought it up quite a bit. And the uh, same thing with the, the gentleman previously, again, you know, the, as he said, democratizing utility information, democratizing mapping. And the truth is this really goes hand in hand. And we're gonna start talking about how these things come together. So as we know, the current solutions are a lot of physical locating, a lot of going out, a lot of physical activity, a lot of boots on the ground, you know, going out, verifying, really doing a lot of things and then doing a lot of uh, counterintuitive things as well. So you go out, uh, you know, you do your investigation and you're taking that information, you're conveying it. But unfortunately, that information is very finite and it's used in that one project and then it goes away. Again, it might be because the uh, topography is changed. It might be, there might be several different reasons why that information went away, but you're using it for that one specific project. So again, the boots on the ground, the understanding of what you're looking for is really key. And the truth is with all the solutions we're going to provide, we in no way are going to change this aspect, but we're going to focus this aspect so that you know where to look. So you know to focus your investigations and really try and take the information which is being conveyed and making it like a tip of a spear where you know where to actually focus that tip of the spear to get your investigation done in a quick and efficient manner. So again, taking it, understanding it, and then being able to focus it. So who are we? Forum is a subsurface geodata company. And this is a company that came from uh, a lot of, uh, previously from military applications and as well from military basis analysis. So a, a, there are a lot of people in this, well, actually almost actually everyone in the company has been in the military <laughs> uh, and everyone in the company has touched somewhere upon this interaction of infrastructure and geolocation. So really understanding that this company is based upon tried, true and tested methods and taking them from the, from the military results and providing them civilian applications. Again, we are providing a scalable solution for subservitility mapping. And the truth is right now, we are focusing on the rural and long linear transmission transportation area lines. Why is that? because it's a great place for the map engine to start developing and building its intelligence of how things work. And really, it's a, a very simple area where we can start developing all the different standards and tools which will apply to the AI and the map engine. So one thing, because we are a geodata company and not an actual physical boots on the ground company, because we are a think tank and not a boots on the ground company, we have thought of what the impact would be from our applications and that's reduction of time reduction of cost because we're remote we can also work globally and number the last one is the reduction of the locating activities allowing the engineers the suit companies the locate companies to focus in their activities and really go locate where they require to be to do their location to do their locates really making sure that the actual work we're doing is really focused so again, the technology, it's a comprehensive AI mapping engine. Our core technology relies on deep military expertise and applying AI and analytics to satellite aerial imagery in the civil engineering construction domain, starting from the data collection to critical event timeline, remote sensing, machine learning, and then eventually providing that utility map. We detect on-surface phenomenon. Everything we do is from a visual-based evidence approach, and again, we are taking different technologies, and this is just some of the technology which we are releasing right now and trying to apply to the civilian industries in North America and across the world. But we are a think tank really trying to advance the different applications for intelligent utility mapping. And one of the reasons why I came and really uh, integrated really well with this, uh, with this think tank and with this firm and everyone who knows me knows that I'm an out of the box thinker, trying to combine different applications and really trying to take things to that next level. So where do we actually fit in? It's the value proposition and the project lifestyle, life cycles, excuse me. The form map 
is really meant for that pre-bidding phase, the planning phase and the design phase. And it really works hand in hand with that suit investigation, with that pre-utility investigation, providing it that framework. For example, in the pre-bid, this is a quick and easy solution to understand how many trenches you're gonna cross or how many utilities you're gonna cross during your initial estimating. It is not an exact, and it's not a 100% accurate in terms of what you have and it's uh, where it's gonna be, but it will give you tolerances of the actual utilities in the ground. And then the utility uh, locating firm, the sue firm, the engineering firm, the owner can actually decide how much effort and focus to put on those utilities. Again, planning, taking all the information and verifying and also root concepts, understanding because it's a large and very scalable type of mapping, we're not just looking at that one little corridor for your utility infrastructure, we're looking at the whole big picture so you can get a large idea of what is where and also understanding that, you know, just because you're not limited to that one corridor, you can move and actually take risk mitigation basis decisions based upon verified utility data. And of course, from that design perspective and going from design to issue for construction, because of the type of technology we're using, we're actually able to see if there are any changes from the point where they did the design all the way to the point where it's being issued for construction. Because a lot of times it takes two, three, four years from the initial design all the way to construction, verifying there's been no changes in the actual topography, in the actual lands from the point of design and that uh, things have been captured and that they've been understood, really important. And on the construction side and the damage prevention side, we do have the command and control asset management program called 4DIG. And that is really, uh, that is really the icing on the cake, taking all the information and really building a 360 of information right through and through to understand and to update with the live map. So from here, you know, we talked about the remote utility mapping, the root concept planning, and these are the two really, really important and good functions which we can do. But from here, I'm gonna talk and I'm gonna give this over to my uh, colleague, Harrell, uh, who will be able to introduce himself, first of all, and secondly, will be able to really walk us through. Okay, yeah, thank you, Ophir, uh, for the nice uh, uh, presentation. So, uh, hi guys, good morning. Uh, my name is Harel. I'm uh, the um, JS and remote sensing uh, uh, guy in Informa Analytics. I have 10 years of experience working in this uh, land cover, land use domain. And what I've learned mostly on in, in the ecology aspect of uh, remote sensing, I'm applying now uh, to form analytics. It's more or less the same methods, but on completely different subjects. So I'm going to show you a few uh, um, uh, few uh, case studies, I guess, um, of what we actually did already. These are projects that we already completed, and these are some of the uh, topics we uh, deal with here. Um, okay. So first off. Um, we can easily verify if there are existing records which are uh, inaccurate. So this project in Alberta, uh, we procured the official data from the owning authorities, and we see all sorts of issues and errors with these records. Um, some, some are location issues, uh, and some are actually CAD-based issues, how the data is stored by offsets and arcs, etc. cetera. Um, so our lines are marked, are marked in yellow, and the official data is green. Um, so you can see how the uh, accuracy is basically insufficient, um, times up to 130 meters in these examples. So our algorithms can compare these lines um, to the current land cover, uh, which you obviously get from satellite imagery, and we can identify problematic areas where, the where there's a discrepancy. Um, if the line crosses uh, like dense uh, wooded vegetation or, or lakes and rivers, uh, we, we can't, um, we raise a flag. Uh, there's some uh, on surface uh, uh, pattern here that, that doesn't match uh, the general outline. Um, so we identify these and, and in more, most cases, um, if there's, again, if there's a discrepancy, we can then identify where the line actually does go. Um, you can see the uh, example on the bottom left, the green is the CAD file. And then in yellow, we found not only the road, but obviously where it started, some uh, oil rig. Uh, next slide, please. 
Um, another example, and Ophir talked about that, is uh, reducing tolerances. Um, so here's another example of how the context of the line while it was laid is missing today. Uh, the challenge was to find and locate a cable TV line uh, that was laid sometime in the early 90s. Uh, the cable company is long gone. Uh, it merged along with four others, uh, local providers to the national cable company. And the original project manager, we called him and he told us something like, yeah, we put it there, uh, not sure exactly, possibly by those cedars. Uh, that, that wasn't really helpful. Um, so we saw some aerial imagery in this case, not satellite, and we found some interesting tidbits. Um, like this old uh, sandstone quarry, you can see on the image on the right. Um, now, since it closed, uh, it, it, it was used as a construction waste dump, um, and the line certainly did not go down there in that quarry. Um, and also, it didn't cross the field because any tractor and implements would have just ripped it up. Um, so knowing those two uh, uh, pieces of information, uh, which are completely uh, um, you can't see them today when you are there in the field. Knowing those, we managed to reduce the tolerances to only a couple of meters. Um, now, I should add, uh, again, as Afia said, this was done in the planning stage, right? We delivered this uh, data to the planners, and then they can now send their locating team to find the line exactly, but we minimize the time in the field. Um, Here is a... a actually kind of a sad story, right? So um, the site manager contacted us and he was building a new off-ramp, you can see it on the highway. And while the pile drilling rig uh, was working, they struck a sewer line and polluted the river. Um, they wanted us to perform a utility investigation uh, for this line since there was no permitting and, and it was all done ad hoc. Um, so we started looking back to see where its origins were and we found that in 2014, there was some disturbance in the soil in this region. You can see that uh, as our mapping engine did in orange. Um, so we cleared, quickly loaded the data and we did those uh, change detection analyses and we confirmed that yes, indeed there was activity in this area and, and then we completed the puzzle um, uh, with the machine. Now, if you see now in, in, in Cyan, we actually uh, found the line itself, the HTPE sewer line, and its route from the industrial area, the small industrial zone on, on, the, on the right, all the way to a uh, sewage plant uh, downstream and uh, where they connected it. Um, so yes, we found and mapped this line, which was covered by the construction works and then damaged by the next construction work on the same site. It's an all too common occurrence. We, we also use uh, artificial intelligence on satellite and aerial imagery uh, to automatically detect and classify uh, utility covers, water valves, utility poles, and any other on-surface object we can identify. And we learn along with our computers. And we also get better after each project, even during the project between iterations. Uh, we've, success we've successfully implemented and used several neural nets in our AI framework, if you, if you know these uh, realms, so uh, single shot detectors, retina net, CRNNs, etc. Here we are looking at concrete uh, sewage manhole covers for a gravity line uh, in a hilly terrain. Uh, on the left is actually one of the uh, first ones we did. And you can see for yourself that it wasn't as perfect as we would have wanted. And on the right, uh, further on, again, we managed to identify most of the uh, utility covers. And AI is never perfect, uh, let's be honest. And that's why we always have a human in the loop uh, to do the final sign off. And any errors we spot uh, are obviously corrected and fed back into the machine. So we get better every time we run our AI. Uh, another method um, we developed is what we call uh, connecting the dots, right? Um, so now that we know that it's a sewer line, uh, there's obviously a pipeline connecting uh, these covers. Um, so again, the trick is uh, to take account into, into account um, slope and uh, any curvature in the lines. We also have a machine to do that. And now let's go up a scale. Um, because we know uh, that the physical action of link pipelines affects the land cover, uh, we can very easily and at a global scale, right, uh, identify where any such action happens. And it may not be a sufficient uh, uh, spatial scale, right? maybe too wide to get a precise location, but it's verified in high accuracy line that we can then go ahead and check with high resolution imagery. Uh, we know exactly when and where it happened all around the world. 
in this example in Virginia, uh, we used the, the uh, European Space Agency's Sentinel-2 satellite. Uh, it's a multispectral imager and it sees in many wavelengths, including visual, visual and infrared uh, spectrum. Uh, so by looking at the ratio between these bands, we can see healthy vegetation. Uh, clearing vegetation in a linear pattern as one does when laying or maintaining pipelines, um, it makes a big difference on these values. So by comparing the before and after the change detection, we can basically see anything and everything that happened, even down to a single pixel. Um, so here I've highlighted uh, the differences between the images, and that's the exact path uh, where the trees were cut down. Um, so the actual pipeline is guaranteed to be in those 50 odd meters, um, which is the width of the, of the works. And, this, me and this, this method works on any platform. Uh, it can be high resolution satellites like Sendler 2 and, and PlanetScope or very high resolution worldview, Skysat, et cetera, and also fixed wing, aerial imagery, drones, anything that has uh, this uh, spectrum. Um, which leads me to the uh, last method uh, I'll show you today, which is using uh, VHR, very high resolution satellite imagery for visual evidence. Um, sometimes we run out of luck, uh, you can say, and we can't find any direct observations of the line, uh, but we can identify other evidence and other features uh, and caused by the interaction between the soils the land covers and the vegetation cover. Um, so in this example, we can see how many years after, um, more than 60 years in this example, um, there's still a notable, noticeable difference um, or to be exact, con a discontinuity in the soil texture and vegetation cover. And um, so our engine picked it up. Um, not this image specifically, that's just for the, uh, for the show. Um, we uh, bought high resolution imagery and, and used our image metrics and manipulations to find it. Um, so this line can be, I guess, natural uh, or unrelated. Uh, but as I said at the beginning, we always know the context in which we are working in. Uh, we know we are looking for a 20 inch diameter crude oil pipeline in this area. So we know uh, that this linear pattern is indeed the pipeline. And um, thank you. Thank you very much, Harold. That was, uh, every time I see that, I, uh, I always learn more and more from you as being the uh, the analyst expert and the GIS expert, and I really do appreciate it. And the, the ease which you actually explain these things are it's absolutely amazing. Uh, there's a lot of work behind it, but uh, just the fact of how you explain this is very, uh, I don't want to say, uh, an ability to convey what we want to do in a simplistic method. So really, absolutely amazing. Thank you. So going forward as well, let's just understand and you know really take a look and where all these things come together in that the, you know that value proposition the reliability again by providing those well-defined tolerances and using the visit, visible evidence-based approach now when i'm talking about the visual evidence-based approach anything that we cannot identify and cannot see and uh, you of course when you're doing your work will bring in those records you'll bring in all that data but again with us if we're able to see it we will put it down and also put down the, the tolerances within it. And again, it's not just looking for the existing data, it's looking for anything with a trench. Uh, it can also be applied to, for example, uh, if you're working uh, on a highway or an area and there are old rest stops on that highway and the old rest stop used to have a gas station, you know, and then we can actually bring in the, uh, the old tanks and all the different things, a lot of environmental processes, which uh, would be missed because of the overgrown vegetation and so on and so forth. So really taking all this previous information, putting it together and making sure that it is used. Now, when I talk about that, it's also that live map. Again, always updating from what has happened in the past and what is gonna happen in the future. Again, time, because it's a high scale utility data with no time. Again, you know, to do a, a large swath, for example, a 200, uh, a 55 square kilometer job uh, would take uh, three to four months for a survey, uh, for the scanning, for all the geophysical methods. In this method with our, uh, one of the pilot projects we've done, it took us 10 days to do you know, that, that large swath of 55 square kilometers on a pipeline corridor, and then allowing the actual company to focus in where they want to do their additional investigations. And again, because we're looking for visual based items, it does not matter if it's conductive or not conductive. Again, it's taking 
all the different items into account with the no boots on the ground. Again, decreasing those locating activities and really being able to focus what you're doing. A 365 a year because the computer doesn't rest. And again, as we know, time is money. And as we're going to go be going forward, we really have to focus in what we're doing and really focus in on how to take our costs and really reduce them because the life cycle of the project is going to be so that a lot of it's going to be based on cost. And the truth is, nowadays, unfortunately, a lot of things are based on cost and it's not giving us the maximum uh, maximum engineering, maximum coverage, maximum effect, and maximum viability of the projects. By actually taking a quick look behind, you can look ahead. So just so you know, as I stated, we are a, we are a think tank of trying to take these applications and really trying to get them out for everyone to use. Uh, currently, as I stated, you know, we're, going, we're looking at different applications, different items, and really, I'm always open to collaborating with anyone who has a great idea. And if you want to collaborate and get these ideas out and test them out, we want to take a look and we want to make sure that we have the right collaborative infrastructure partners to look at all these different technologies. So that being said, I'm going to come into my next slide here. Uh, <laughs> I'm not so sure if anyone knows, but I am heavily involved in UESI and we have a lot of Canadian events coming up. And, you know, we have the TRS Roadshow where we have the UESI track. And you can go to cat.ca for the sign-up link. Uh, the May 26th, you have the uh, CCGA 3D Utility and Subsurface Utility uh, Digging Deeper series. Again, to CanadianCGA.com for that. And a couple of UESI events as well. May 27th, we have the UESI New Day for Canada, which will be encouraging people to go to the Pipeline Conference in August. But if you want to join the Canadian chapters in really exploring all the things which we just talked about and infrastructure-related items, feel free to come and feel free to attend. The links are here. If you cannot get on the links, then just send an email to info at usicanada.org for this information. That was just a little public service announcement that I want to make. And now I'm going to say thank you on behalf of myself and Harrell. I do appreciate it. And like I said, I want to see our industry go forward with proper conveyance and use of technology. So. Thank you. Oh, well, fair. Uh, thank you very. Thank you very much for that. And and I also would like to thank Harrell uh, in particular because those examples you gave of how 4M does its analysis of things underground was really very clear. I mean, I think it was remarkable. I have a couple of questions. I just have a couple of questions. Um, the first is that it seems like if, um, if I'm a company that does uh, subsurface utility engineering surveys for anybody, you know, typically before design on a construction project, for example, it would seem like using 4M analytics would be an obvious first step. I would agree, but <laughs> that's more of a commercial item, but I 100% I agree. The truth is, we want to work hand in hand with the, the suit companies and all the different engineering companies, all the different owners to give them that initial focus validated piece of information. This is not record data. This is validated visual approach evidence. So yes, we'll tell you that there's, there's a trench there. We'll tell you you're going to cross 50 trenches. We're going to tell you, you know, you're going to cross 50 trenches in a couple of directional bore areas. You know, we're looking for that visual evidence. And from there, they can start developing and really understanding what they have. But uh, look, I, I didn't want to be commercial here. I just want to convey the technology. And I'm working on several other different things with uh, 4M. I've, I've been bouncing ideas from all my time in the field and from all my time here in Canada, and plus my, uh, my background from Israel, but really taking things and trying to adapt different technologies and uh, trying to really adapt uh, for the industry. And uh, I, I'm really fortunate that 4M has that same belief that I do. And you know, uh, me being a part of that team is fantastic. Yeah, so. what I was getting at, I wasn't trying to be commercial either, <laughs> is that, that it would be, a, you know, having that gives you a good idea what you may be facing. And then after that, you would use standard uh, locate technologies, potholing in some cases or whatever to confirm. But at least you have an idea, you know, at least with this technology, you have an idea of what you think is out there. 
100 percent agree this is that focusing tool that tip of the spear so we're going to point you to where to actually do we're going to point your tip of the spear to actually get the most valuable information right now i have one, just one other follow-on question and that is um are there parts of the world where you you have a hard time finding certain uh, you know enough satellite or aerial data uh, to do this kind of analysis or is it something that is where the data is really available almost for the entire land mass of, of the earth there are a lot of areas where the data is available but there are certain areas like for example certain military areas or different countries which have a lot of different restrictions which we would have difficulty going to but uh, there is image of uh, there are there is imagery available in, in almost the entire world. Dan, or sorry, Harold, do you have any other comments on that? Yeah, so um, the world has been imaged, I guess, nonstop uh, for the past 50, 60 years uh, through uh, many series of satellites, the Corona uh, satellite, Landsat, now Sentinels and very high resolutions in the past 20 years, 15 years. So basically every spot in the world, every day almost. So going forward, I see no problem. Uh, going backwards, again, these are the satellites. And there's also air imagery and other sources. Yes, some areas of the world are harder to get um, data for, uh, but we also have other methods to augment uh, if we're missing um, uh, high resolution images. Great. Uh, I want to thank Carell and I want to thank Ophir very much for a really a fascinating uh, presentation. Um, Harrell, in particular, I really thought your explanation of how this technology actually worked is that is really was really helpful i think for people who don't quite understand how you could use satellite imagery you know surface surface you know surface imagery to detect things underground so th thanks again harel thanks again ophir for that for that presentation we're going to go into a, a break and we'll be coming back at uh, 1135 thank you thank you jeff and thank you everyone i do appreciate it and uh, have a fantastic day